get started, we'd like to welcome Aaron Rye into the interview room here at the Fortinet Championship. Aaron is making his eighth career start on the PGA Tour, and he is one of our newest members after successfully navigating the Corn Ferry Tour Finals. Aaron, welcome. If we can get, get some comments on uh, getting the season started this week at Silverado. Yeah, it's great to be here. Um, first time in California as well. Um, Really enjoying it. I haven't really had much time to, to be outside of the golf course and hotel just yet, but um, yeah, it seems like a great week. We played the course yesterday for the first time. Um, awesome setup, lovely course, nice bit of shape to it. It's in fantastic condition, so I'm sure it'll be a great week. Um, and yeah, looking forward to getting the season started. Yeah, talk a little bit about the, uh, the state of your game. Uh, you made four starts on the PGA Tour last year with three top 30 finishes including an impressive uh, performance there uh, at the Open Championship. Uh, if we can just get some comments on the state of your game. Yeah, um, the game has been pretty solid over the last three months or so, really. Um, there's nothing incredible. Um, shot a good few rounds in there. Um, getting through Corn Ferry Finals was, was definitely a goal as well. So to be able to accomplish that was, was really a dream come true, to have status on the PGA Tour this year. Um, but yeah, to answer your question, the game's been been pretty solid. Um, good tee to green. Um, been hitting a lot of fairways, hitting a lot of greens, which is kind of what my game is based on. Um, I'm pretty average in terms of length, um, so kind of consistency, shot shaping, um, control and flights is kind of the the main parts of, of what I do, and that's that's been very solid over the last few months. And then the rounds where I've I've putted well and kind of kept it going with a short game uh, of the low rounds that have kind of come together. So it's it's been there or thereabouts recently. All right, great. Uh, we'll open it up to uh, questions and we'll go over to Cameron Morfitt with PGATour.com. Yeah, hey, Aaron. Um, hey, Cameron. Congrats. Congrats on uh, making it out here. Um, Thank you. A couple questions. Uh, one is how much of a global player do you plan on being? Uh, do you plan on kind of playing uh, both tours. And then the other question is, um, what do you think is, is going to be the big difference between the Corn Ferry Tour and, and playing the big tour up here? Yeah, um, first and foremost, I'll, I'll plan to play a little bit more on the PGA Tour this year, um, and that will be a priority, really. I'll play a few events back in Europe, um, but it'll probably be a few events here and there, to be honest. Uh, regarding Corn Ferry, I didn't play a huge amount of Corn Ferry, to be honest. I only played three events, which were the finals. Um, so I probably don't have enough experience to really compare that to the PGA Tour. I played a few WGCs, a couple of majors here and there. And to be honest, the standard on Corn Ferry is, is very good. It's very competitive. And I think no matter where you play now, um, whether it's European Tour, PGA Tour or Corn Ferry Tour, you've, you've got to bring a game. Um, and if you don't, then you're probably not going to compete wherever you play. So I think if, if I can kind of focus on myself, keep my game in a good place, um, hopefully I'll, I'll be able to, to play some good stuff this season. And then just real quick, because you, you've qualified to play out here more permanently, does that change your situation in terms of where you're going to be based and, and where are you based? Yeah, um, over the next couple of months, I'll probably travel back and forth from Europe to America um, and kind of take it week by week with the PGA Tour events that I get into. Um, once kind of this wraparound season is finished, I'll probably look into a couple of places around Florida, potentially, um, to just look for a kind of a semi-permanent base for the rest of the season. Travel back and forth is, is quite tough on the body, quite tough with time difference as well. I've done it quite a lot the last few weeks and I'm, I'm definitely feeling it a little bit this week. Um, so I think long term ahead for the rest of this season, I will look to try and base myself over here a little bit more. Are you in London over there or where, where are you? Not far from London. Um, I'm two hours north around kind of Birmingham, so very central within England. Yeah, okay. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Best of luck this week. Thank Thanks. you. Okay, let's go to Adam Shupak with Golf Week. Sorry, Adam, I can't hear you. Okay, he is uh, asking how you celebrated getting your card. I think he's on mute. 
Sorry, yeah, sorry about that, Adam. Um, you know what? I didn't really do too much um, because after the first event where I did secure the card in Boise, uh, we were straight on to the next event in Ohio and then straight on to Corn Ferry Finals, on the, the final event, sorry. And then last week I traveled back over to Europe to play in the BMW PGA. So um, I've been on the road for the last three weeks. So it, it's definitely hit home having a PGA Tour category, but I haven't really had a chance to take a step back, reflect and celebrate um, because it's, it's just been week after week the last, last few weeks. Sorry, I can't hear you. When did the dream of Perfect. the PGA Thank Tour take shape for you? Um, I think it first started to hit home probably um, a few hours after finishing in Boise. Um, I had a great chance to win that first tournament on the Corn Ferry Finals. Um, and unfortunately, I double bogeyed the last to, to come second in the end. And I, I felt disappointed for a while, to be honest. Um, it wasn't until I kind of got back to the room and really sat back and tried to put things in perspective of what that week meant, what a second place finish in that first event meant. And it was a little bit surreal, to be honest, because the polarizing emotions were not something that I've ever experienced before. On one hand, basically losing a tournament on the last hole, but on another, having, having a great PGA Tour card. Um, so it hit home when I really tried to reflect on, on the positives of what this season may hold ahead of me and having the opportunity to compete out here. Um, so it was probably later, later on that evening on, on the Sunday night of, of the first event. Uh, interesting. I, I was still curious more, like, how young were you when you started thinking, I'd love to play on the PGA Tour someday? To be honest, it, pursuing golf as a career was, was what I wanted probably from the age of seven or eight years old. I think growing up, I wasn't really aware of the differences between all of the different places you can play and the different tours you could play. So it probably wasn't until the early stages of my professional career, probably kind of six, five or six years ago, that I thought that, okay, it'd be, it'd be amazing to have the opportunity one day. Um, but through being based in Europe, Europe was, was the main avenue for me. Um, so that, that had always been my focus in kind of the short and the medium term. Um, and then as, as things kind of progressed in Europe, through having a good few seasons over there, a few opportunities opened out in the US through playing majors and WGCs. Um, which kind of opened the door to Corn Ferry Finals. So it all kind of took its natural path, I guess. Um, but it, it was something that I always wanted to do, uh, just compete with the best players in the world. Um, it was certainly more on my radar probably over the last five or six years or so. Get a little light, give a little color of uh, this record of 207 consecutive 10 foot putts you made when you were 15 years old. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, it was actually attached to a tr putting training aid at the time. Um, so it was a small mat which had two railings on either side to try and train a straight back, straight through putting stroke. Um, but I, I couldn't take it straight back and straight through. So instead of using the mat and the training aid, I put the ball behind the training aid and the record was how many, how many putts could you hold from 10 foot in a row. I think the previous record stood for 18 months at 137. Um, and yeah, I think I got to 207, which took me an hour and a half of non-stop 10 foot putts in the same spot. Um, so yeah, it was, it was cool. I had a very sore back by the end of it though. A very sore back. <laughs> and better putter now. I'd say I'm a more consistent putter now. Um, if you asked me to roll 208 putts in a row from 10 foot, I probably wouldn't be able to do it though. Um, so yeah, more consistent and probably a little bit better technically. So I'd say overall I'm, I'm a better putter. Do you still use that putting aid? I don't know, no. Um, that putting aid is actually my trophy cabinet. <laughs> the very same one that I used to make the record, so it, it stays there. I know you've probably told the story many times, but what's the backstory on the two gloves? 
Yeah, I've, I've done it for a really long time now. Um, I was only eight years old and I, I used to practice in the UK. I grew up in, in the winters there playing in some very cold weather. My hands used to get very cold. Um, so my dad thought it was a good idea to, for me to wear two gloves. And um, the gloves that I actually wear now are the gloves that I started with. And there was a man in our area who, who basically designed the gloves. They're not golf gloves and they were not designed for golf in the first place. Um, so my dad reached out to him to get a pair of these all-weather gloves. And then, um, yeah, I'd stuck with it ever since. I think two months down the line, my dad forgot to put them in the golf bag. We only had a normal leather glove. And I went to play and I completely lost the grip in my other hand. So even in such a short period of time, um, I stuck with the two gloves and I've, I've been with them ever since. Thank you. And Aaron, uh, final question. Just talk a little bit about uh, the win last year, uh, taking down Tommy uh, Fleetwood in the playoff at the Scottish Open. What that meant to you to win for the second time, sort of validating that first win and then how much confidence you gained from that. Yeah, it was, it was very special. Um, and also it had been a couple of years since the first win. Um, it was soon after the lockdown period as well. I made a number of changes through, through that period that we were in lockdown and to see validation through some good results even prior to the Scottish Open and then for it to be kind of capped off through winning that event was, was really special. Um, it had a world-class field. Obviously Tommy, Tommy was there and a lot, of, a lot of players from the top 50 in the world were there. So to be able to compete and, and win a tournament as prestigious as that was, was special. Um, and it just, yeah, it kind of validates, as you said, a little bit of that extra belief to, to feel that you belong and to feel that your game is, is ready and good enough. All right, good stuff. Well, Aaron, we appreciate your time and uh, best of luck this week. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir.